And Landon, let's start with you. I know you've had a lot of experiences in Arkansas. Can you share with us about a time you've had to stand for what you believe in and when that was hard? Absolutely. So one of the times that I had to stand up was in my science class. So we were on the topic of the Big Bang and talking about evolutionary science. And the word billions of billions of billions of years that dropped. So me and my science teacher entered into a discussion. And I asked her, okay, how old do you think the Earth is? She said that she believes that it is billions of billions of years old. I told her, I do not believe in this. I have a biblical footprint that I believe in. So if you were to think about it in the Bible terms, Earth is only like six to 7,000 years old, and this is what I believe. So you can look at the genealogical records and pinpoint how old it is. There are some Christians who try to fit billions of billions of years old between the days of creation. But on day three, plants were created. And on day four, the sun, moon, and earth, excuse me, the sun, moon, and stars were created. So the billions of years doesn't make sense in that context, because how would the plants survive without the sun? So the important thing is to remember is whenever you're responding in situations like this, is to respond in a position of love and not aggression. How did your science teacher respond? Um, she was a little taken aback, and she said that I was asking her two personal questions. Oh, interesting. That's a really interesting response, frankly. Yeah, to, I, I, to, to I, take creation personally. I, I didn't. I didn't think that common for science education very... is personal. <laughs> what was that, Landon? I, I didn't think that it was a very personal question. Anyone who knows me knows that I ask questions on everything. Hmm. Uh, Sarah, tell us about time you had to stand up for something you believe. So I think my wake up moment for our society was during 2020, towards the end of it. So this is after COVID broke and our uh, local community had dealt with it. And going into the fall semester, most everyone in our community really did think we had a good chance of going back to school. And eventually our school board decided that they were shutting down schools again, even though a lot of schools in our nation stayed open. And I just saw the looks on my friends' faces. I saw my siblings' faces, my own uh, personal emotions on it. And something just didn't sit right with me. I looked around the community and at our circumstances, and I did not think it was right that we were closing school. So I started to look into the facts of it. And I started looking at the COVID numbers. You know, I started looking into what other districts were doing. And the actions of our school board just did not make sense. And so I started to ask questions. I asked them questions. I asked the superintendent questions. And I started calling them out when they were making decisions that were not in the well-being of the students that they were entrusted in. And as I continued down that path, I unfortunately came to a lot of really just sad kind of conclusions about the people who are running our local government and the corruption, really, that is in it. And I saw how youth how our lives, our mental health, our well-being, our futures were being used as a political token. And mm -hmm. that was kind of the first moment when I stood up and I said, this is not right. What did you do? Well, at first it started with a lot of research. And then eventually I went and I started testifying every other week to the school board about um, the impact that their actions were having on students. And then from there, after I realized that the school board truly just didn't care about what they were doing to the student body. I went to our local assembly, which is our legislative branch, and I found a similar end there. Yeah, we all saw that play out here in Anchorage, but you did a great job. I think it's important for people who listen to the show to know that just because you take a stand doesn't mean that you always get the outcome that you want. But I think taking a stand still makes an impact and a difference because I think you would agree that what Sarah Price did on our assembly and taking on all of the people who enforce mask mandates and shut down our schools and our small businesses and everything across Anchorage, absolutely that pushback from somebody who was in high school reverberated through the entire state. You got statewide media coverage for the stand that you took. 
And it's still the, the echoes of that remnant still exist today. And I think are having an effect even in, in the elections of 2024. So you did a great job with the stand that you took. Let me transition over to Reagan. Reagan, can you tell us a story about a time you had to take a stand in today's modern culture? Yeah. So back in 2021, I had a podcast called Let's Talk Christianity, where I talked about very controversial topics. And one specifically was abortion. And I talked about how that was wrong through the lens of Christianity and especially through science as well. I interviewed an obstetrician for it. I did some research with some pastors about how biblically that was wrong and, you know, some other statistics and also answering some common questions or I guess gotcha points that pro-abortion people have. But I got a lot of backlash for that. I had people emailing me saying they wish I'd die, saying that they want my whole family to die. Uh, during Halloween, a bunch of people dressed up as me and went around surrounding neighborhoods talking about how horrible of a person I was, going around to my community and slandering my name. I lost most of my friends because of that. So it it definitely was not a great time, but I, I definitely learned who who really were my friends and who were not. And it was sad in the moment, but I'm so proud that I stood up for what, you know, what I believe in and, you know, what is truth and what is right and just. Wow. So how did you handle that? How did you come through that and like persevere onto the other side to be healthy, happy, and whole? I mean, just knowing that I'm doing what the Lord wants me to do and I'm operating through him and with him and I'm walking with him. And that's, you know, the only person that I, you know, want to please. That is the person that, you know, I want to do his willing for, you know, my, my thoughts are aligned according to his will. So that is something that's very important to me. And while it's really sad in the moment, you know, to lose, you know, friends, what's important to me, you know, bits and pieces of my community, I, I put my faith in the Lord and I trust in him that, you know, I will have a new community that's for me and, you know, for my faith and that they're yoked with me. So that's, that is really what helped me. Mm, that's good. How about you? A stand that I've taken? Yeah. I mean, after interviewing Mr. Prager on this podcast, one of the things I started to do was just put all of our content out there for all of my peers to see, which it's did not, our, not, it's uh, not our normal audience demographic. <laughs> no, not it, not at all, not at all. And it's definitely increased tensions with a lot of people and has made jobs that I've been working on things I've had to do harder. But I also know I don't, I don't go and put out all of our content. I go and I put out the things that I'm like. These are the things people need to see. These are the things people need to hear. This is, these are the points that if I were in a conversation with them, I would make myself and things that I would want mm. them to hear. So just being bold with what I believe and not, not backing down on any frontier, I would say. If you can't stand up for little small things, if you can't stand up to a keyboard warrior, you're not going to stand up to a Goliath. 